All right, what's going on, you guys? Nick here with Nick Strength and Power. So today I wanted to tell you the story of a bodybuilder named Bill Pettis. Now, many of you may not be familiar with the name Bill Pettis, but you're probably familiar with some of the pictures that you're seeing in this video. Now, Bill Pettis actually didn't achieve very much as a pro bodybuilder, so that's why his name isn't that big. But he was known as having the biggest biceps of all time. That was kind of his claim to fame. Um, they were measured to be... 23 and one fourth inches and this was confirmed by joe weeder himself joe weeder measured the biceps himself and they were bigger than arnold schwarzenegger's 22 inch biceps and also bigger than lou ferrigno's 23 inch biceps um, so that was bill pettis's main claim to fame is living in la training at gold's venice with arnold and all those guys and having bigger biceps than arnold at that time period so people would see him walking around at gold's um, and next to Arnold and next to all, the, all these other guys, his arms would look absolutely massive. So even though he didn't compete, he had one of those famous physiques within the gym because within Gold's Venice, you had the best of the best bodybuilders. And then you had this freak walking around named Bill Pettis that had bigger arms than all these guys. He just didn't really compete. Um, so that 23-inch arms, 23 and one-fourth inch arms are still huge even by today's standards. And again, this was confirmed by Joe Weider himself. So he never won any major shows, like I said. Throughout his career, he mostly made his money um, as a bouncer, a bodyguard, and was intermittently homeless. So, you know, from time to time, he would be homeless. He wouldn't be able to have a place to eat or sleep. And sometimes Joe Gold would provide him a place to sleep, maybe let him, you know, kind of live in the gym. Um, and him and Joe Gold were very, very close. So another claim to fame that this guy had was he was in a photo that appeared as an advertisement for the 1984 Olympic Games. Now, for those of you who are familiar with the 1984 Olympics, they were held in Los Angeles. Um, so they were held right there by Gold's Venice. And there was a picture taken of him training at Muscle Beach. And that photo was used as a promotional advertising photo for the 1984 Olympics. So those were his two claim to fame. Uh, two claim to fames. Having the biggest biceps of all time, in his own words. And then appearing in that 1984 Olympic Games advertising poster. Um, so Joe Gold died in 2004. And that's when Bill Pettis' downward spiral really began. Like I said, Bill and Joe were very close. And Joe seemed to take very good, of, uh, very good care of Bill. Even though Bill you know, didn't work, didn't have a job. He was homeless. I believe Joe Gold gave him a few bucks here and there. And kind of gave him a, a safe place to stay. So when Joe died in 2004... This is when Bill Pettis began to drink very heavily, and that's when he became that's when he officially became homeless. So before this point, like I said, he was intermittently homeless. So every once in a while he would be homeless. But in 2004, he officially became homeless and he began to drink very heavily. So that brings me to the very sad story um, of recently. Bill Pettis was found dead near a lake, or actually near a creek in Pennsylvania, and the cause of death, I guess, was drowning in this creek. And the sad part of this story is that when they found his body, all that he had with him was a little black box. And inside that box, all he had was old photos of him as a bodybuilder and old photos of him with Arnold Schwarzenegger. So you can tell that his whole life was dedicated to bodybuilding um, and kind of those old golden days with Arnold. And he kind of never got past that point. He never had a career beyond that. He never had a job beyond that. You know, that old classic era of bodybuilding was really how Bill Pettis defined himself. And it's kind of a sad story that he ended up homeless. He ended up kind of crazy, according to some people. I mean, as you can see in some of the photos that I showed you guys, this guy was walking around Muscle Beach, you know, fat and flabby and old in posing trunks. And this guy wore posing trunks 24-7, um, regardless of what setting he was in. So this guy probably had a few screws loose towards the end of his life. But it's a very sad story. He died at the age of 69. And again, they found him dead next to a creek in Pennsylvania. And all he had with him was that little black box with old black and white photos of him and Arnold. Um, so it's a very sad story. Um, I think it's important to, to keep in mind that this does happen. There are bodybuilders like this that get obsessed with the sport. And they can never really get past bodybuilding. And all they want to do is go to the gym. And they kind of want to live in the past. And then guys like this guy, you know, they end up dead, they end up homeless, they end up, you know, not having a job. This, this was also the case with a bodybuilder named Rod Kuntz, who I made a video about as well. Um, so this is something that happens to bodybuilders. I think it's important to kind of bring this up um, and remember these guys.
So I hope you enjoyed the video. I hope you were entertained. Please give it a thumbs up. Nick Strength and Power, signing out.